Today, we are going to talk about David and Tamar, both responding to the restraining order and abuse situation. But first, we're going to get into what allegedly started the argument. And today, we're at Zuma with Sonic and his mom. We're having a good time over here. You know, we're going to give mom a little break. Oh, we're going to have the best time in the world. What are we going to do in there? We're going to go swimming. As you see, these glasses are brand new. I just got them at the mall. <laughs> Hello, Mo. We got mom carrying, carrying all the bags. You can't have it right now, you know? You got to carry all the bags. Anyway, we're going to have a wonderful time over here. Yes. We're going to have the best time. We're going to play. And I got my... Uh, we got Sonic Mom over here who's uh, holding us back a little bit. Well, she's 81 years old, so we'll let it pass, you know. Is she actually 81 gonna... years old? Yes, she is. She's like almost as, almost, you're almost as old as her now, aren't you? No. <laughs> you know who's almost as old as her? Who? Pop-Pop. Pop-Pop? Oh. He's 70. He's se no, Pop-Pop is 72, right? 75. 75? Really? Oh, he's going to be mad if, he, if you think he's that old. <laughs> Anyway, we're gonna have the best time in the world, guys. We'll see you and later. It's the seagull. Wow! Look Bye, at that. Bye, guys. Look at the seagull. Bye. Wow! Look at that. That is so cool. <laughs> I don't know if he put Logan on Insta without Tamar's consent or if Vince was upset about Logan being with David without Tamar on Insta. According to the Blast, that is what they were arguing about. Let's take a look at what T.D. Jake's daughter had to say about the situation. Cora said, considering we don't know the whole story, let's not jump to the conclusion of David being a victim. He was just posting videos with Logan. Now he's getting abused. Get out of here with this. Tamar is working on herself while this man is trying to be the star of a show. Tamar is simply trying to heal, and he won't let her get the help she needs without being a victim himself. David is not a victim. David is capitalizing on Tamar's life as he always has. So my question is, how is he trying to be a star of a show when he doesn't want to be on the show? Let's take a look at what he has to say. Mental health is real. It's really real. I mean, about 50% of Americans suffer from mental health. About 43.8 million Americans uh, suffer from mental health. Almost 50% experience mental health through their lifetime. Uh, it's, a, it's a terrible thing that happens to people and there's no reason why we should be ashamed of it. We should be able to talk about it openly and not consider it to be a stigma. It is not a stigma. You know, I remember, uh, you know, Tamar went through uh, some childhood abuse. And she, uh, to overcome that, she wrote, uh, she created a movement, uh, a website called No Need to Be Shame. And it was for sexual abuse and... Um, I think we should create a no need to be shamed people who are undergoing uh, issues and it's not something we should hide from. One thing we can't forget, however, is the impact on the family. It's hard, you know, for those of you who have people, you know, who are going through, you know, mental health issues, you know, the impact on you, you know, the impact on the children. It's been two years, you know, you can't forget that love. Um, I love Tamar with my entire heart. I, I'll continue to stand by Tamar, no matter what. But we can't forget the victims. And those are the victims of domestic, domestic assault, domestic violence. Domestic violence happens to men. 40% of domestic abuse and domestic violence occurs against men. I mean, this number is highly underreported. 30, 40, 50% of men don't report domestic abuse for a number of reasons. It's really sad. You know, I remember, you know, there was somebody who attacked Tamar a few months ago. I thought very unfair uh, at the time and now. Uh, and when she attacked, you know, Tamar, I came to her defense. Didn't believe it was right for one black woman to attack another black woman in America. I will never, never bring myself to, to attack Tamar, somebody I've spent so long with. I'll speak the truth. Here's the truth. I've been a victim of domestic violence, domestic assault. I was attacked. I was driving on high speed uh, and I was attacked, a blow to my neck, my, my, uh, my jugular. Uh, for those of you who know about uh, medicine and the jugular, that's what carries blood to your, to your brain. When you're hit there, it discombobulates you. I thought I was going to crash, you know, I had to, but I was driving fast. I had to call my mom. I called my mom, 15 year old guy, having to call his mom. 
when he's driving and my mom started praying. Same hours in the car, my mom started praying uh, only to find out that after the blow, I was being secretly recorded, something that's illegal and unfair. And the tapes being sent to my family, the tapes of me in distress, in pain, calling my mom were being sent to my family and other people. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, my car was destroyed. I drive a Rolls Royce, many of you know, almost $30,000 in damage. And uh, I can't really continue to speak about this because uh, the cops are involved. Uh, it's a criminal case uh, now. Uh, damage to the car, the taping, the, the, the assault. Uh, but I'll tell you something, um, despite all that, and despite the fact that we're separated uh, and, and we're, you know, we're, you know, we're pretty much over, I, the love never goes away. I love Tema with, to, from the bottom of my heart. I always have, and I will continue to. No matter what she needs, I'll be there as a support for her. The way I've been from day one, whatever she needs, I'll be there. That's my promise. And I will not speak out, speak out ill against somebody I loved so much. I've always loved. So I want to end with one thing, a phrase, which was sent to me by my, my cousin. And it was Exodus 14, 14. God will fight your battles. You only have to be silent. So I'm going to let the police case, you know, reach its logical conclusion. And I'm going to continue what I believe to be my mission. And that's to help people. What was told about me grabbing or hitting uh, Tamar or anybody else? It's a complete and absolute falsehood. I have never, ever, ever, and never will ever put my hand on a woman. I grew up in a household. My parents were together for 50 years. They were married. I lived in the home for 21 years. I observed them for over 40 years. And my mom and dad were the most loving and kind couple to each other. I never saw my dad hit my mom. I never heard my mom hit my dad or see it. My mom used to call the boys. Uh, there were three of us. There were three boys and three girls. My mom used to call the boys. She used to tell us, do you ever see your dad hit me? Do you ever see your dad lay a finger on me? Never one time did my dad, I never witnessed domestic assault growing up, ever. Not from a friend, not from a, or a cousin, from, I never did. I didn't grow up in that environment. My mom also used to tell us, do you ever see your dad cheat on me? My dad never cheated on my mom, not one time. Not that I know of, not that she admits even after she's 81, she's here now uh, just for spiritual support. She's my spiritual support, my mom. So I grew up with two covenants that I made to myself and two covenants that I made to my God. I would never hit a woman and I would never cheat the woman that I was dating, I was married to. Two covenants I have never broken. I will never hit a woman. Any man who hits a woman, God gave us women to be our partners, to be our rock, to be our strength. You hit a woman, you deserve to go to jail. Women are not as strong as us physically. You do not touch women. Not in my home. Not ever. Not ever. And you never cheat on your girl. Ever. Not one time. The moment a guy cheats on you, you deserve to leave him. I will never do those two things. I never, ever laid a hand on Tamar, Braxton, or any woman in my entire life. What you've been told is false. It's a criminal investigation that's going on. Uh, I'm the victim. The truth will come to light. Um, I'm really hoping there's no issues of perjury uh, on the other side. It really is, you know, it's, uh, it's important. Uh, you can say whatever you want on social media. Don't tell the cops something that's not true. I told the cops exactly what happened. I was a victim and never, ever, ever, ever will lay a hand on a woman. Tamar sent a text to Jason Lee and here is what was mentioned. He said he was going to kill me. We were on the way to treatment. He said we were going to end up in a murder-suicide. I only grabbed him after he grabbed me hard. That's his thumbprint. I never hit him. He hit me. I didn't do a police report because I wasn't trying to ruin his business. David just don't want to look bad on this Wii TV show. He wants everyone to think I'm crazy. He's the...
hungry and thirsty. Malika picked me up from treatment. She is a witness. He called the police after we left. And before I left, I tore the camera out of his 2013 RR because I know how thirsty he is. All facts. He's a liar. Here's what Jason Lee had to say. Tamar, I saw your new show. I believe you went through what you went through because of or for him. He didn't want to look like a pathetic, controlling piece of ass that he is. I only didn't say nothing because I didn't want to put you in danger, but it's on now. Here's a picture of Tamar's arm. So, we've heard both sides, and somewhere in the middle is the truth. So here is my opinion or my conclusion. We have David driving the car, taking Tamar to the mental health facility. They get into an argument about putting Logan on Instagram. David started driving fast. Tamar told him to slow down. He probably was like, I will kill the both of us if you don't be quiet. Tamar punched him in the face, I mean in the neck for not slowing down. He grabbed Tamar by the arm to keep her from hitting him again. Then she started recording him. Then Tamar tore the camera out of his car before she left. And he was mad, so he went to the police. I hope everybody gets the help that they need. And I'm sure they will be back together. And that's all I have for you guys today. Until next time, bye-bye.